Hi, everyone. I can see the first uh, attendees joining. Just going to wait a little bit longer. Ah, and the first people in the chat. Great. So, yeah, I'm Tobias, and um, I'm from Tandem, and I'm going to uh, talk a bit about how languages are learned around the world. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to point you to the chat functionality here. Um, those of you who have attended other um, presentations before are probably very familiar with it. There's a, fact, uh, there's a uh, chat functionality here in Zoom. And I would like you all to um, post to panelists and attendees, not just to panelists, uh, where you're from. So we have a bit of an impression of uh, from where around the world we have attendees here. So please use the chat functionality and we get a bit of an overview. I see Austria, Switzerland, Italy. Oh, wow, Texas, Russia, Romania. Wow, that's great. So we are a pretty international crowd um, and we're gonna talk about language learning around the world and cultural differences and all of that. I'm not, I would like to invite you to always, whenever you have a question, post it in the chat and then um, I'm going to keep an eye on it all the time and uh, answer some questions uh, spontaneously, but we'll also have some time after the presentation to go through questions. So let me quickly share my presentation. I hope you can now see it all and arrange my windows here. And here we go. Yeah, so I'm Tobias. I'm one of the co-founders of Tandem. Tandem is a language exchange community. Uh, it has currently 12 million members from all around the world. And on Tandem, you can learn 300 languages with others, including 20 sign languages. And this is a map with our top 10 countries. And these are the countries I will be speaking about in this presentation. So our top 10 countries where we have most members in the Tandem community are the US, Mexico, Brazil, um, Germany, Italy, France, Turkey, Russia, China, and uh, Japan. You can see we're going to have a lot of fun with flags in this presentation. And uh, what I would like to start with is a brief introduction to what Tandem is uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it. So it's a language learning app. It's, um, you can select the languages you speak and the ones you want to learn when you create an account. Then we present you with a list of potential exchange partners, people who speak the languages you learn and learn the languages you speak. And then you can start chatting with them in uh, a messenger, very much like WhatsApp or WeChat, where you can exchange messages, audio messages, uh, images, and some special language learning fun functionality. You can correct other people's messages. You can translate messages. So a messenger that's kind of tailored towards uh, language learning. Um, you can find it in the App Store and the Play Store. We also have a uh, web app uh, under tandem.net where you can create an account and also can use Tandem on, in your browser on the web. So we have a big community and uh, what I would like to do today is to go through some statistics, facts, numbers and figures about our community and what um, differentiates it across the globe in different countries. I'm going to start with something very um, like big picture. What are the most popular languages that are learned on Tandem? Um, probably this first uh, top 10 is not a super big surprise. By far the most learned la um, language on Tandem is English, followed by German and Spanish. They are pretty much even. Then French, Japanese, Korean, Italian, Russian, Chinese, and Portuguese. Um, then in the places 11 to 20, it becomes maybe a bit more interesting. Here you find languages like Dutch, Swedish, Norwegian, for example, which are not like languages that have a lot of native speakers, but they're very popular to learn in uh, our community, um, which is one of the things that will follow us through this presentation, that there's a big part of our community that actually learns languages because they want to live in a different country. And the Netherlands, uh, Sweden, and Norway are um, popular countries to uh, move to. And also, we have a big group of users who already live in these countries and learn the language to get along in their everyday life, um, who live like an expat life. Also, maybe interesting here on uh, spot 19, it's the first sign language, American Sign Language. We're also going to look a bit closer uh, at sign languages later. 
then this is a map that shows what is the most popular target language by country. And you see here, again, not a surprise, English is by far the most learned language. But what's interesting here is that in Germany, it's actually German. So there seems to be a big expat community here, people who live in Germany and want to, live Germ uh, want to learn German. And it's probably very similar in the US as well, which is the reason why English is the number one learned language in the US as well. Then we get to the second place. What's the second most popular target language? And here we can see now that this expat um, scenario uh, is very obvious here now in France, where French is the second most popular language, Italy as well with Italian. Um, and in other languages, it's a bit of a mixed picture. So in the US, the top two languages is Spanish, in Brazil as well. Uh, in Mexico, it's French as well. In Germany now, it's English. Uh, and in Turkey, Russia, it's German. And in Japan and China, it's actually Japanese. And on third place, in third spot, the bronze medal goes um, in the US to French, similar like in Brazil and Russia, in Germany, France, and Italy to Spanish, in Mexico to German, in uh, Turkey now, it's uh, Turkish, it's the expat uh, case, and then in um, the Asian countries, in China and Japan, it's actually Korean in the third spot. Then looking a bit closer at English levels. So at which level are people in these different countries of those who learn English? Um, on Tandem, basically when you create an account and you set the languages that you speak, we ask you for a self-assessment where you can say I'm a beginner, intermediate or advanced learner, or I'm either fluent or native speaker if I'm not learning the language, but I'm on the other side of a language exchange, so to say. Um, and here, you can see that in the US, uh, unsurprisingly, the most represented level is native. Then interestingly, in German, it's fluent. So there are more people who say they are fluent in English in Germany than those who are learning it. Um, and then in France, in Italy, and in Turkey, it's the intermediate learners who are the biggest group. And in all other countries, it's English beginners who are the biggest group of learners on Tandem. And talking about beginners, this is the correction functionality that I uh, mentioned briefly before. So on Tandem, when somebody sends you uh, a message uh, where you spot a mistake in, you can actually uh, uh, correct this message and then your exchange partner will see your correction. And we looked a bit deeper into which, in which countries this correction functionality is actually most popular. So where, in which country do people correct others the most? And uh, the world champion in correcting others is actually France, but very, very closely followed by Germany. Then comes Italy, the US, Mexico, Brazil, Turkey, Russia. And at the end, it's the Asian countries, Japan and China. We have quite a few theories why that's actually the case. And one of our theories is definitely that it has to do something with cultural differences, that there are simply countries, I'm German, I'm from Germany, and I can say it for Germany, where correcting others is actually not something considered too unpolite. It's actually you're helping someone with their language, and it's actually something positive. While there are other countries in the world where maybe correcting others is more like on the side of not being very polite to them. Um, this is the like... Uh, the strongest hypothesis we have about this, the differences are actually really huge. So. French people correct others 10 times more than Chinese people. Um, might also be that some languages are more difficult than others, so people make more mistakes and get more corrected, but I don't really see a correlation here, so it's definitely cultural differences uh, that I think are the main factor here, but would be very interested. If you have any comments on this or questions about this, then please post them in the chat. I would be very interested if you come up with one of these countries, how you see this uh, in your culture. The next thing that we took a closer look at, and this is now data from a survey that we run earlier this year uh, with like 15,000 Tandem users, where we asked people, what are your learning goals while you're actually learning a language? And this is the top 10. So the biggest part of our community learns a language to live in a foreign country, followed by meeting people from other countries. Um, then comes improving your language skills for work to uh, find a job or to uh, yeah get into a different career path. Um, number four is a bit like vague, practice to not lose skills. Uh, then comes the group that wants to go on vacation and learns a language to speak that language in their vacation. Um, then is the group that wants to pass an exam or get better grades. These are most probably students, of course, or people visiting language schools. 
Number seven is to improve the accent. And then number eight is to talk to partners and their family. And here we also looked at the geographical um, split and if the situation maybe shows differently in different countries. And this is the map of the 10 countries. So to live in a foreign country or to already live there is the main uh, motivation to learn a language in the US, in Mexico, in Brazil, in France, in Germany, and in Russia. You can have the hypothesis that in some countries, maybe this is more towards, I want to move to a different country, and then others is more like, I'm already living there and I need to learn the language to live there. Italy is interestingly the country where the group where, who learn languages uh, for work is biggest. And then in Turkey, in China, and in Japan, it's meeting people from other countries. Uh, we also looked at language learning resources. What are the most popular resources that people use to learn languages? And this is the top 12. Number one is uh, watching movies in your target language, in the language you are learning. Uh, number two, listening to music. So media consumption seems to be on top. Number three also points to that. It's uh, language learning videos on YouTube. Then comes textbooks and audio courses. We also ask if people are using apps. Of course, we didn't ask if they use Tandem because everyone who answered that survey is a Tandem user, but we, used, uh, we asked them for other popular apps like Duolingo or Babbel. Um, reading books in target language is number six, then language learning blogs, then followed by classes at school or at university, you know, language school. Then followed by having a local language exchange partner. I have to say that this survey was done before COVID. So currently, of course, it's very difficult to meet in person with your local language exchange partner, but the survey was done before that. And then number 11 is private tutoring. And then last is local language learning meetups. And I guess those meetups also haven't been gotten more popular over the last uh, month. And here also, again, the uh, split up in the US, it's learning with apps, number one in Mexico and in uh, Brazil, uh, so basically in uh, Latin and Central America, it's music. And the same in Russia. Japan is the country where those who want to learn by watching YouTube videos is biggest. And in all other countries, it's movies in the top position, just like in the overall ranking. Uh, movies is here the most popular way to, uh, to learn languages. Um, we also looked at communication. So on Tandem, you can exchange text messages with people. You can write audio messages. Um, and you can also go on audio and video calls. So have like a live interaction with someone. And we wanted to check if any of these communication paths or ways or channels is more or less popular in different countries. And here on this map, basically the size of the flag represents how popular this way of communicating is in the country um, based on the overall users. So Germany here is uh, the country where the biggest percentage of German users, uh, or it's the country where the biggest percentage is using audio and video calls. So Germany is number one here, audio and video calls are most popular, followed by the US, and then you can see the size of the flags. It's Italy, France, uh, Turkey, then uh, it's Russia, and then followed by Brazil, Japan, and Asia. There might be some cultural reasons here coming into play, also very interested in opinions here, but probably also some technical reasons. Um, in a country like Brazil, for example, there's a bigger percentage of all users that use Tandem with their mobile data, while in Germany, it's mostly Wi-Fi. So of course, it's easier to have audio and video call when, you have, uh, when you're on a Wi-Fi. China is maybe a special situation because they have that Chinese firewall, which also makes apps like Tandems a bit slower in the country and audio and video chats might not be the best experience. But yeah, there might also be cultural reasons why in some countries people are more open for that. Interestingly, what we're seeing in the last months is that video and audio calls become more popular uh, in our community, probably also because people get much more used to them. Same like we here, we are now, last year at Expolingo, we actually had a tandem community meetup where we met all in person. And now everyone got more used to uh, audio and video experiences. Um, this is audio messaging, slightly different picture. So to send audio messages is most popular in the US, followed by Italy. Then it's Brazil, Turkey, France, then Germany, uh, Mexico, Russia. And again, the Asian countries, it's least popular. Um, here, yeah, it's probably also has to do with people's uh, general messaging habits, uh, but we don't have like very good uh, explanations for the differences here. 
So also very interested if somebody has a theory about this, why that's actually the case, that there are differences in this popularity of audio messaging. Another question that um, has been on our mind already for quite a while is the question, is there actually a seasonality for language learning? Do we see this in our data? So are there seasons where people learn languages more? Um, of course, we can only answer this for the tandem community, but there's a certain curve that we've been seeing for quite a while. So we're doing tandem for a bit more than five years now. So 2015, we started. And I remember the first time you see here, this is the curve that kind of shows roughly how the usage of tandem is throughout the year. And this is very constant, um, like year by year by year. We start pretty strong in January, February, March. It's people's new year resolutions. It's also in the Northern hemisphere. It's more of like the colder season where people spend more time at home and maybe have more time to use apps in general. And then we get into when the weather gets better, <laughs> it gets a bit lower. Then we always have a peak in summer when there's summer vacation. I have to say that a lot of our users are pretty young and still go to uh, school or university. So there's always a, uh, like a surge in usage in summer. And then we always see this dip in September, October when school starts again. And probably people have other things on their mind, uh, getting used to the new year of school and so on then using apps like Tandem, the way that they used it uh, when they had more time. And I remember the second or third year, whenever we had this dip in September, October, we were really surprised and we thought, what's happening here? Are we doing something wrong? Is this, is this us? <laughs> but then where we saw this pattern again and again, repeating year by year, there seems to be really an underlying seasonality. And then when the weather gets colder again and we get towards the end of the year, we see stronger usage again. Uh, yeah, December and January are usually uh, the strongest uh, month in terms of usage on Tandem. But of course, everything is different in 2020. So the white line shows our curve in 2020. Um, and it's very much aligned with um, where like the times that lockdowns came into place, the times that people were asked to stay more at home. So here you see usually in March and April, our numbers go down and this year in March and April, they, they uh, went up. If you would look at this country by country, you could see in February, it was starting in China to go up. Then in March, the European countries joined and then the US. So it was very much in line with the numbers you could, or let's say the, the lockdowns that governments imposed in countries. And then again, had a little bit of this like summer up and now like uh, beginning of fall down. And now the curve is kind of getting back to uh, a similar pattern. But what we saw in March and April and May was uh, very exceptional and um, yeah, definitely can be attributed to the situation that most of us had to stay home and uh, had more time to learn languages maybe. There was maybe also a time when people felt a social, certain social isolation and the combination of learning languages and meeting people around the world is what we offer as a product um, was uh, more popular than ever before. Now we get to like, certain group of languages. This is the last part of my presentation, um, where I first wanted to give a closer look at sign languages. Um, so you can learn sign languages on Tandem. Of course, it really only makes a lot of sense if you do video chats. But as you saw, American Sign Language is the number 19 most popular language on Tandem. So there's a sizable community on Tandem that actually learns sign languages. And this are the 20 sign languages that we offer on Tandem ranked by um, popularity uh, in terms of people who learn it. So number one is American, then there's international sign language second, followed by British, French, Brazilian, Spanish, German, Japanese, Korean, Russian sign language, and then Mexican, Chinese, Australian, Italian, Indo-Pakistani, Turkish, Austrian, Malaysian, Dutch, and Polish. I have to say that these last uh, ones here in the list are those that we added uh, actually pretty recently only. So it's not super surprising that they haven't found a lot of people yet that are learning them. But this is basically the picture that we see. Um, and American Sign Language there is very popular on Tandem. And we uh, want to support this very much. And we really like the idea of people using Tandem to learn sign languages as well. Now we get a little bit more language learning nerdy. But I think Expolingua is the perfect place uh, to look at this into constructed languages. So languages that uh, you all know, the most popular is probably Esperanto and there are a couple of others. And we also offer um, 11 of them actually on Tandem. And this is them ranked by popularity. This is actually speakers and learners um, because in these languages with maybe the exception of Esperanto, you rarely find native speakers. So it combines speakers and learners. 
And Esperanto is the number one with a uh, like big difference to the others. Then followed by Valyrian and Dothraki, which are languages from Game of Thrones. Then it's Tokipona, then it's uh, Klingon from Star Trek, uh, Mandalorian from Star Wars, then there's uh, Interslavic, Interlingua, uh, Kenya and Sindarin, which are uh, languages from the Tolkien universe. And then Edo is currently in last spot. I actually saw that uh, this morning there was a um, presentation or introduction into Edo here at Expo Lingua. So um, while it's not like the most popular learned language on Tandem, you can actually find uh, other people who learn Edo on Tandem. So if you're interested in uh, finding like-minded Edo speakers, you have a small but dedicated community on Tandem as well. And then this looks at Esperanto popularity around the world. Um, so this is basically the countries where we have the biggest percentage of Esperanto learners. Uh, the US is first here, then followed by Brazil. Uh, France, Italy, then Mexico, uh, Russia, China, Germany, Turkey, and uh, Japan. Um, interestingly, our Esperanto community, while well, the overall community on, on Tandem is slightly more female than male, is 60% male, 40% female. And yeah, this is the data we see would be very interested in someone who's maybe more uh, familiar with the Esperanto community than me, if this is like matches the picture of the Esperanto community around the world where this uh, language is most, uh, most popular. And then we're also already coming to the end of the presentation and I wanted to uh, give a quick uh, look at emoji as well. So a while ago, maybe like three years ago, more as a joke, we added emoji as uh, another language you can learn on Tandem. Um, you can argue that it's actually an iconographic language and you can technically communicate in it. But for us, it's more like, I don't know, to bring some fun to Tandem uh, to do this. We've regretted it a bit in the meantime because emoji is very popular on Tandem. And if you say that you are uh, learning emoji or you're native in emoji, um, but it's actually more of a joke and you want to learn other languages, you might get flooded with other people who actually want to learn emoji with you and not the languages you're actually practicing. So I would use this uh, very carefully. But yeah, I wanted to take a look here as well, where in the world is emoji most popular? And this is emoji proficiency around the world. So the percentage of our users that actually speak or claim to be native or speaking emoji. Um, and the number one with the uh, like, uh, number one spot here takes China, then followed by Japan, then it's the US and then Turkey and then France, then comes Brazil, Mexico, uh, Russia, and the country with the lowest emoji proficiency in the world is my home country, uh, Germany, unfortunately. So it gets the set emoji. Yeah, this is the picture of emoji. And in emoji, it's actually 51% female, 49% male. There's a different ratio than in, uh, in Esperanto. And that's already the end of my presentation. Please excuse this image here that's uh, not uh, promoting social distancing in the classroom. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the chat and I'm happy to, to answer them. We have about six, seven minutes left. So if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to, answer, uh, to ask them. There's one question here. Is it speaking emoji or just writing? That's a really good question. Um, I guess it's uh, writing or typing emoji. I think every emoji also has a name, but I'm not familiar with them. So uh, yeah, I correct myself. It's writing emoji is the correct uh, term. Do we have an iPad app? Yes, we do. So uh, there's an iPad app. There's also an app for uh, Android uh, tablets. Uh, there's a dedicated uh, app for that, yes. Next question, do you find many people are there to use it as a dating app? That's actually a really good question. And I could probably talk much more than five minutes about this. Um, of course, yeah, we do that. Um, and we're trying also to present Tandem as a friendly open app where everybody's invited and uh, you know, we're not presenting it necessarily as a very boring and dry learning app, um, but we are very vigilant when it comes to people who use Tandem just for dating. It's totally fine to 
come there, want to learn languages, you make friends and maybe even more. I've even been invited to a wedding once of people who met on Tandem and it was a really great experience. But what we don't want to see in the community is people who come there and have zero uh, interest in language learning and just are there to meet other people. And what we do about this is when you download the app and you create an account, you actually have to go through a certain process where you have to apply to get into a community. And uh, if your application indicates that you're not there for language learning, you might not even get into the community. And in the community, you can also report people on this. And uh, we follow up very closely with these reports and also warn people or even ban them from the community if uh, they're not following our community principles and what the app is actually made for. Um, but of course, whenever you bring people together, there is a certain dynamics around um, gender. So 80% of, co of communication on tandem of conversations are between male and females and only 20% between male and males and females and females or those who identify uh, with, the, with these uh, gender identifications. Um, and yeah, we're, we're trying to, 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 to keep a good balance there, but I can only encourage you, especially if you're a female and you make like um, experience with people who are kind of um, yeah, offensive or annoying, please report them, then we can deal with it and then we can make sure that the community stays friendly and very language learning oriented. And I could talk on and on and on about many, many reasons here, but I want to get to some other questions as well. Um, What is the average age of all your users? The average age last time I checked was 21. So it's actually a pretty young community. And the majority of our users are between 18 and 25. And when it gets to people over 40, like me, it's actually a very low percentage of people who, uh, who are in this age group. So our community is pretty young. Yeah, why is, why is this, do you think? That's a good question. Um, I think one of the reasons is probably we are a, um, an app that you use on your phone. And I think the younger generation is simply on their phone a lot more than the older generation. They look on their phone for language learning solutions and it's what they basically uh, spend their life on or a part of their life is uh, happening in a digital world. And this is, I think, why a product like others speaks more to this younger generation. And then, of course, it's also the case, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy then if you are in a community of a lot of young people and you come in there as an older person, maybe you feel it's not really like kind of your crowd and you're more likely to leave. So I think this, the fact that there are a lot, a lot of young people also makes it more attractive to young people. And uh, this is definitely also a dynamic that's at play there. Um, also wondering if there are many indigenous endangered languages on Tandem. Yes, we actually just added earlier this year a lot of um, indigenous and endangered languages. It's also the year of endangered languages uh, by the UN. And we took this as an occasion. Um, I could look into these numbers and maybe next time I could present them. The numbers are lower though than for sign language, but we offer, um, I think about 20 uh, endangered and indigenous languages on the platform. If you're missing one, uh, you can write to our support at support at tandem.net and suggest languages. And roughly um, once a year, we uh, go through this list and add a couple of new languages. Do you think it is to do with the meaning of tandem in other languages? What is the meaning of tandem in other languages? Please, uh, French Julie, uh, let me know what you mean by that. And then Pascal asks, could there be an inbuilt assessment test for the language level? Yes, this is actually, we actually just launched this only for English. We offer so-called tandem certificates. Uh, so if you're an English learner, you can get a certificate now for Tandem. And if you pass the test connected to the certificate, so we have an English beginner, intermediate, advanced and fluent test. You also get a verification check mark on your profile behind your language level so others can actually see that it's not only based on a self-assessment, but it's actually based on a test that you took and that you passed. Is it related to CEFR? Um, yeah, our certificates are actually related to CEFR and there's an A1, A2. Uh, no, wait, there's an A, no, we don't have an A1 yet. So we offer A2, B1, B2, and C1. And there we tested them against uh, other tests and there are 
uh, very comparable. What our test currently doesn't allow you or our certificate is to um, apply to university or um, apply for a visa because what we don't do is uh, we don't monitor if it's you taking the test. So uh, currently you can't use it for these use cases, but we might add this kind of functionality in the future that we can also verify the person who's taking a test and offer a more uh, official certificates. Currently, of course, you can you can see it on your attendant profile. You see a nice certificate there. Uh, you can also um, share it with others. You can attach it to a job application, for example, but it doesn't uh, let you do anything too official yet. The price of those certificates uh, varies a bit, but if you go into the app and you check, you see uh, the price points of these certificates. They are definitely much cheaper than a TOEFL test for 300 euros, but yeah, just like I just explained, they also don't have exactly the same value because you can't do so much with them. Now, let me check in the chat if I missed something, because we're also at the end, uh, already one minute over. So yeah, then let's wrap it up here. Thank you very much for joining. This was really, really great. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to use Tandem, go to tandem.net or search for Tandem in the App Store in the, or in the Play Store. Uh, write us to support at tandem.net if you have any questions. If you want to connect with me directly, you'll find me on LinkedIn to be a stigmize, just like it's written in the program. And yeah, wish you a lot of fun at Expo Lingua and um, yeah, hope to see you maybe next year or the year after in person again at Expo Lingua. And thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>